Today I have this PlayStation 5. At least I really hope it's a PlayStation 5. The listing said it was a PlayStation 5. In fact, the listing said this powered on and the only problem was it didn't have a display. But I have a feeling that this PlayStation 5 doesn't power on because, well, it's in pieces. Nothing to do but to take it out and see what we're dealing with here. And that certainly is a PlayStation 5 in pieces. So we have this piece, the front board, which is not entirely broken. That's good. But there is what, what looks to be liquid metal on here, which is a very bad sign, actually. This bracket. Here's... Uh, okay, well, there's... There's a power supply. That's useful. Assuming it works. Another one of these strips. The antenna. This cable. Here's this one side, but there's nothing inside of it. Put that down here. Then we have this, which... Oh, well, this is not attached. These two metal plates are not attached to the motherboard which is very scary i already see the fan connector looks ripped off okay just put that right over here as well because that's going to be a problem it is the disc base version and that looks to be in pretty good shape also a positive uh the other Plastic enclosure, and it looks to be in pretty good shape. The fan, and the fan spins without any issues. That's good. Oh, very important. It did come with the manual, because how else would we be able to work this without the manual? And our two fins. And yeah, so the clamp that goes over the APU and hold it in and make sure that the liquid metal doesn't spill everywhere. This should be attached to the motherboard, but it's not. How much you want to bet that there's liquid metal on that board? Then these, this piece, and just screws all in this box and all inside the box that it came in. So I'll show that here. That's wonderful. Put this to the side for now. Get those screws out in a bit. Now, who knows if this has all the parts it's supposed to. It looks to have all the major parts. I'll give them that. But I'm probably missing a screw or two. And this is bent. Lovely. A lot of things are probably bent that shouldn't be bent. I wouldn't be surprised if a few of the screws fell out along the journey because this console did make two round trips from the seller's place to my place. I'll talk more about that in a little bit because this console has been through a lot already, but it wasn't supposed to arrive like this, at least not according to the eBay listing. I already see a lot of issues with this console and I haven't even peeked at the board yet. And I know what you're thinking. I should just send this back and you're probably right. This is not what I bought. I bought a PlayStation 5 that powers on and doesn't have a display. And this, in the state it arrived, is not a PlayStation 5 that powers on. In fact, this might be a PlayStation 5 that never powers on again. Hopefully not. Hopefully I can fix it. You'll find out in about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, depending on how long this video ends up being. It could be a four hour video. It will probably take me four or five hours to do, but I'm not going to make you sit through that kind of torture. But the reason I'm not sending this back right away is because I only paid $65 for it. And even if it never turns on again, I'm going to come out ahead. Assuming the power supply works, the fan looks to be in okay shape, the disk drive looks to be okay, that right there is probably worth more than the $65 I paid for the whole system. So assuming that some of the spare parts on here can be used for a different console if I can't repair it, I'm going to come out ahead for this transaction not for the amount of work I'm going to put into it, the amount of time I'm going to spend trying to fix this. No, it's not going to be worth it. I 
I have to imagine. But money-wise, the sum of the parts are going to be greater than what I paid for. And at the end of the day, that's the seller's fault for that because I originally paid $200 for this PlayStation 5. And if he would have shipped it properly, I would have been okay with what I got, assuming it came together. And all it had was the display issue. But as it is, if it came like this, there's no way I would have paid $200. And neither should you. If he had just put this back together enough, a few screws in the board, then things wouldn't have gotten damaged. Like this got ripped off, that got ripped off. This heat sink is damaged and you see the damage on the heat sink there. So that's not great. That's probably somewhat fixable in a way. I mean, it's just thin pieces of metal. Ribbon cables look like they haven't been ripped out, which is impressive for someone who didn't know what they were doing. It looks like someone tried to replace the HDMI port on this and they left a lot of flux around here this area let's see it there all right now for the scary part oh my gosh okay and liquid metal all over this liquid metal all over this that's got to come off now this is a battery connector which is been completely ripped off and there's something else that goes here but there's liquid metal all over that inductor this hdmi port looks poorly taken care of that piece is cracked i don't know if that's gonna be still working i think the first thing to do is get this under the microscope and see if there are any other components that are possibly knocked off i don't see anything that jumps out, like capacitors or anything like that. They did work over here. I can see flux there. That's, that's worrisome, you know, and there's just a ton of flux on this side of the board too. Yeah, you know, the more I look at this, the more my confidence level in my chances of fixing it go down, but we won't know until we get started. And my gosh, they really did a number on this board, didn't they? Then we'll start looking around the APU, which looks like crap. I mean, that is just terrible looking, but nothing we can do about that right now. There's too many other issues. There's Okay, editing Justin here, just to run through what I found on the board. There's this little piece that's cracked. I don't know what this is even still, an inductor of some sort, maybe. There's two of them, actually. Both of them have cracked plastic. Don't know if they're still working, but it doesn't look like anything's exposed. Maybe a little bit. The HDMI port looks horrible, but actually has all of the components, save for that little tiny capacitor that always seems to be missing. And yes, underneath these pads, as we'll see later, are a ton of ripped traces. Like, I think almost all of them have some damage to them. It was absolutely ridiculous. But amazingly, it does have all the other components, the diode, the capacitor, the resistor on both sides. So yeah, win for them. And then I come to the speaker. The speaker, I think this is a speaker, is completely torn apart and ripped off the board. Liquid metal everywhere. This little area has been worked on. You can see that there's flux all over it. Don't know what they changed and that's worrisome. Or if this is just a spill that they didn't clean up because, well, there are other places that have the same thing. And here you see the CMOS battery that has been ripped off. Both sides have the pads ripped off, so that's fantastic. And then just some light damage here and there on the copper, but nothing too bad. More liquid metal everywhere. And then you see the underside of the HDMI port. And yes, it does have the components that we need. And then this little transistor component that's just covered in a ton of flux, dried, crusty flux. I don't know what they were doing. I really think that they were trying to remove that HDMI port with an underpowered hot air station and they doused the area in flux and in their attempt, they completely ripped the traces and then they just left the flux everywhere. Here we come to the connectors. The disc drive connectors got a bent pin and the fan connector is completely ripped off. And the antennas for the wireless and Bluetooth are ripped off. That connector is damaged, but still working. And here I find the only component I think I'm missing, this little piece right here, that I later determined to be a diode. 
And then this connector for the storage expansion looks damaged, but nothing to worry about right now. No need to worry about expanding storage on a device that might not ever power on again. And that's it for all the damage that I found on this PlayStation 5. Honestly, not as bad as I thought going into it, but still bad enough. Okay, so I guess to start, we're gonna clean this thing up. Okay, while cleaning this, I'll try and explain what happened with this particular PS5 and how I got it for so cheap. You see, it was an auctioned PS5 on eBay and I won and bought it for a total of $214. The listing showed a somewhat disassembled PS5, but it said it powered on and just had no display. Not a big deal. I was hoping it was just a damaged HDMI port. I can fix that and sell it for a profit or maybe keep it because I don't have a PlayStation 5 myself and there are some good games out there that I'd like to play one day. But then on the day it was supposed to arrive, UPS updated the tracking and said it had been damaged in transit. That sucked. I was looking forward to receiving it and just like that, it was gone. They sent the package back to the seller and the seller ended up giving me a refund. I thought that was the end of it, but then a few days later, the seller messaged me and said, hey, UPS only thought it was damaged because the package rattled when they moved it. Oh, good for them. Saying he was tired of dealing with it, he offered it to me for $50. I was pleasantly surprised, thinking I would get the PS5 I was willing to pay over $200 for, for $68 after shipping. He listed it, and I bought it. Now, he did tell me that it had some ripped traces, which I thought meant around the HDMI port. That was going to make the whole repair more difficult, but I like a good challenge and I've never had to repair traces before. So I figured, hey, if you're gonna do it on a console, why not do it on a cheap console that you're not that worried about destroying? He also said it was in pieces, but I suppose I assumed that meant like the fins were off and some screws were out. But the way it was thrown in the box with the screws just loose, not even in a Ziploc bag, and the board loose was honestly unacceptable. What I think happened is the seller packed it like that and shipped it off, but when he got it back and looked at the damage that occurred in shipping, he realized he couldn't sell it for $200 anymore. And he's right, if UPS had delivered the console like this, in this condition, I would have sent it right back. eBay is very buyer friendly and the seller definitely didn't deliver the console in the condition he claimed it to be. Even in his relisting that I bought, he didn't disclose this condition. So I could theoretically still return this. But at the end of the day, the seller's poor packaging only served to cost him about $130. So let that be a lesson to anyone who ships consoles on eBay or any device on eBay. Ship it properly, package it up well. Part of me wishes the seller wouldn't get anything for this transaction because they really don't deserve it. But like I said, I'm not likely to find a PlayStation 5 even in this condition for this cheap. But even if I can't fix this PS5, I'm gonna come out ahead with the experience I'm getting and with the parts I got. All right, now back to the repair. First, let's look at this piece right here. Okay. Hey, I think I fixed one piece of this broken PlayStation 5. You're ready for me. We'll remove this pad. Luckily, looks like the pieces aren't too bad. I can probably reattach these here. Attach the third one to this, and then these are just ground planes anyway. So I don't need to really worry too much about those, I don't think. Now, let me make it clear. I've never done any sort of trace repair like this. I did have one PS2 Slim a while back with the rip pad. That didn't go so well, but Beyond that, nothing to the extent that this PS5 needed, so please don't use this as a guide or anything, and if you see me royally screw up, just know it's my first time. I get that mistakes were made. I imagine most will make mistakes their first time trying something so hard that technicians literally charge hundreds and hundreds of dollars to do it. As I suspected, this was so weakened that when I tried to bend it, 
it broke right off. It's gonna make this repair just a little bit more difficult, isn't it? If this piece hadn't broken off, a lot of this would have been much simpler and much quicker to fix. It was difficult to say the least trying to somehow reattach that leg to the pin without completely melting the plastic and destroying it worse than it already was. But after a long while, I finally get that leg to at least appear attached. Okay. I think we might have gotten it. I don't know if it's enough to keep it in place. Clean this area up a little bit carefully. Not great. It's certainly gonna break as soon as I try plugging something in, I bet. But now let's turn our attention to the battery that also came off. So I'm gonna try and scrape a little bit of this off. Thankfully, reattaching the CMOS battery went a little smoother. Still attached, I think. Check it. Yeah. Okay. So that and that are done. And probably... Yeah. Definitely some ripped pads there. All of these might actually be ripped. Wow. That looks like someone tried to come in here and yeah, that looks like all of these are ripped. What did the person do? Did they just, did they just, I mean, is this, this is weird, right? This isn't melted. This looks like it might still even be, this looks like it's still the factory HDMI port. And someone came in here and put heat to it or so. I don't know how you rip these pads like that to tell you the honest truth. I mean, using a completely, uh, but these are still the fact this didn't even come off. This didn't even come off. So where are the, where are the pads at? I'm, I'm so confused, but I think the only thing to do to move forward is get it off. Oh, and while I was moving the board around, this capacitor came off from the other side. So over here, this line, it was really loose. I put my hand on it and it broke off. So I'm gonna have to put this back on after the fact. Now, I'm no expert at this, but I've changed a few PS5 HDMI ports and I've never done that, so that takes a special level of intent, I guess, to manage to mess it up that bad. Just give these some lead solder. 
I don't know if I, I don't think I need to put anything on those pins because, well, they're barely connected to anything at all, so. Very nervous. To see what the underside of this looks like. Okay, come in with the hot air. The board warm a little bit. Okay. Okay, there's the port. You can see a few pads came with it. Now the scary part. And that is terrible. That is what Alex at Northridge Fix would call a Hiroshima. That is, my gosh. Oh man, that is just a mess. Gentle, gentle, gentle. I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this. This is way above my current skill level, but you're never gonna learn unless when you try it, so. Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and a half that are still attached, meaning we're missing 10, 11, 12. Editing Justin again, and admittedly the first few trace repairs didn't go quite as smoothly as I'd like or as quickly, but it does feel like as I got further into it, the like later half of the traces went by pretty smoothly. I didn't have any solder mask at this point, and that's definitely a big mistake. Highly recommend if you have any intention of doing trace repairs to get some solder masks to put down or something to keep them in place because the way they were just way too loose and as you'll see when I try to attach it to the HDMI port it just does not work out well so another lesson learned about having the proper tools for the job.
kind of want to get that capacitor on there first. Me and that capacitor don't really like each other. Hopefully. Yeah, I just want to keep them nice and healthy. Uh, come in here. Real low. Just because. in place okay so in this case I am going to tend these pads a little bit just to help myself out I don't usually do that I don't think but um, in this case where every trace is ripped that's what I'm gonna do That is crazy. There's absolutely no way this is gonna work. And I was right. Trying to attach the HDMI port to these makeshift pads built on a wire and a prayer didn't go as well as I'd like. I really did need some solder mask to place over the wires to hold them in place and give them some stability. So after this failed attempt, I ordered some on Amazon and it came in a day later. Let's see how it went once I had the proper tools. Now I think this looks like it might be okay. These are all in good position. Uh, yeah. And I think I can come in here with some solder mask. These are all be good. Only one I'm somewhat interested in is this one in the middle. Just want to make sure that we have a pad there that we can put some solder on. There we go. Perfect. I bought this literally for this occasion, so I've never used it before. And you can tell I've never used it before because of that right there. I'm pretty sure I can clip that up somehow. There. I also don't have a uh, UV light. <laughs> it's on order, but not here yet. So I'm gonna actually have to take this outside. Let's do that. All right, here we are outside. Gonna let the sun do its job and hopefully cure that solder mask. We'll put it in the sun for, I don't know how long, find out. Okay, now that it is cured, let's see how well it's actually cured. Looks pretty good to me. I mean, these are, that one's not that great, but these are a lot better than they were. I'll say that much. Honestly, I think that's probably the best I'm going to be able to get with this one. I mean, I'm going to check it again just to see. Very gentle. 
I mean, this is a butcher job here. We're gonna be honest right now. But also, realize that like, this thing was so messed up. You got someone like me who's never even done face repairs before, trying to fix that. Oof. That's rough, guys. That's rough. You're asking a lot, okay? All right, so. Sounds connected, sounds connected. Sounds connected, sounds connected. Sounds connected, connected. Oh man, this is looking pretty good actually. Now I just kind of hope the board actually works still. Okay. I do need to go in and solder the legs. How's that feel? Oh wow, that's, that's actually pretty strong. If those are all making a good connection, I have a good feeling about that. That's a big if, obviously. Must have been knocked loose in transit, and then it was just right for me to put too much pressure on it when moving the board around. So we can get it done right the first time. some kind of circuit. Plug this in. Hopefully it doesn't explode. Ooh, 
I heard a little... Mm. So, that makes me think the power supply might be okay. Let's very carefully plug in our HDMI. Now, for the moment of truth, do we get anything at all? It did beep. That's weird. Okay, thought that was a speaker. Anything, no signal. Okay. Not a thousand percent surprising, but I don't, uh, I guess I should have put those LED lights on. I don't see any lights up here indicating if it's still on or not. Oh, it's still beeping. I don't know if this is gonna make a difference, but I noticed that this ribbon cable up here did not, was not attached. Didn't realize that. So let's see if that gets us any different results. Maybe lights. Oh, blue light. I get blue light. And then it goes right back off. Okay. That's where we're at. We're at a blue light and it shuts right back off. I'm gonna have to do more research on this one, but I'm gonna keep working on it. And in what's become a bit of a too common theme the last few videos, this repair didn't go as successful as I'd like. I'm not gonna say it was a failure just because of the mess I started with, at least now it's a contained mess. It does have a light, it does beep, surprisingly. So I think the next thing to look at on this board will be the standby voltages and see if, if I'm missing any of those and if there's a short somewhere on the board. I, I, for my research, it doesn't need the fan to start. I still don't know if it needs that little diode that's missing. I don't know if that's a crucial component to the circuitry or if it would start without that. Uh, hopefully I can figure that out and find a replacement for that from a donor board. Obviously there's still a chance that there's liquid metal somewhere on the board causing an issue or another component that's either broken or missing from the failed shipping effort. And if that's the case, that could be creating the no power situation. But while I didn't manage to fix it completely, I did manage to get a lot of good experience from this uh, repair attempt. There were two Put it mildly a lot of torn traces on this board the fan connector the the battery the hcmi port and i you know as someone who's never done trace repairs before i feel like i did an okay job i honestly feel like the hcmi port didn't look too bad um especially after i got the proper tools which is always kind of what i learned throughout this entire process that having the proper tools really helps i, I think a lot of times when you see people who have completely destroyed their boards, probably like this. It comes from not having the right tools, maybe a hot air station that doesn't, you know, work quite as well as what they see everyone else using on the internet. And I feel more confident that if I were to come across a console that had one or two ripped traces, I would be able to repair that. I might be a little overconfident in that regard, but that's usually something that, that happens with me. I'm always a little bit too overconfident. But that'll do it for this repair attempt of this disaster console. I hope you learned something useful from it. I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle to bring these pile of parts back to life. And let me know down in the comments what you would have done in this situation if you had received this console in this condition. Would you have just sent it right back, no questions asked, or would you have kept it knowing that it was only $68? I think, you know, based on the experience I got from trying to repair it and the parts I received that do seem to be in working condition, that this is well worth the $68 I paid. And if you're new around here, please subscribe to the channel. We're on our push to 1,000 subscribers and we need less than 100 to get there. So if you wanna be one of the first 1,000 people subscribed to my channel, something that probably doesn't mean that much to you, but would mean a lot to me, you should act now. I mean, if you've made it this far in the video, can you really say you don't like the content? Eh, well, whatever you do, just have a wonderful day.